Hi everyone, I am Pauline, a Belgian nuclear medicine resident, and in this video I'll explain what a radioactive tracer is, give you some examples, show you how it is made, and in the end I will tell you a little bit about the differences between PET and SPEC tracers. If you are interested in nuclear medicine, make sure to have a look at the nuclear medicine playlist for more educational videos. Nuclear imaging produces images by detecting radiation from different parts of the body after a radioactive tracer is administered. A radioactive tracer or radiopharmaceutical consists of a radioactive isotope which creates the image and a tracer which determines where the signal accumulates to form the image. So radioactive tracers emit radiation, which functions like a GPS tag, allowing doctors to track not only where in the body the atom goes, but also how it behaves. We usually choose tracers that are naturally used by the particular organ or tissue during its metabolic process. For example, in PET scans of the brain, a radioactive atom is applied to glucose to create a radioactive tracer called fluorodeoxyglucose. FDG does not have a hydroxyl group at a C2 position. Instead, it contains a radioactive atom fluorine 18. We mainly use FDG as a tracer for brain PET scans because glucose is the brain's main source of energy. Another good example of this is radioactive iodine, iodine-131 or iodine-123. This is a radioactive analogue of stable iodine-127 and is used to diagnose and treat thyroid diseases. The process of replacing atoms with a radioactive form of the atom is called radiolabeling. As illustrated, the tracer can be an individual atom, such as iodine, but it can also be a marked molecule, such as FDG. There are different methods for producing radioactive tracers. We can use radionuclide generators, a cyclotron, or a nuclear reactor. By far the most important generator for radiopharmaceutical preparation is the molybdenum technetium generator, often referred to as a technetium generator. If you want to know more about how radioactive tracers are produced, I recommend watching my videos about the technetium generator and the cyclotron. So back to our first example about radioactive glucose. As with all radioactive fluorine-18 labeled tracers, the fluorine-18 must be produced in a cyclotron. Protons are accelerated by the cyclotron until they reach sufficient energy and bombard oxygen-18 enriched water. This collision causes a knockout reaction, where an incoming proton knocks out a neutron in the oxygen-18. This results in fluorine-18. The quickly decaying fluorine-18 is then collected and immediately attached to the deoxyglucose in a series of chemical reactions. This results in the creation of FDG. FDG is primarily used for imaging tumors in oncology. FDG is taken up by the cells, phosphorylated by hexokinase and retained by tissues with high metabolic activity, such as most types of malignant tumors. As a result, FDG PET can be used for diagnosis, staging, and monitoring treatment of cancers. PET and SPEC scans are the two most common imaging modalities in nuclear medicine. Both techniques use radiopharmaceuticals to create images. The primary difference between SPEC and PET scans is the type of radioactive tracer used. While SPEC scans employ tracers that directly issue gamma rays of lower energy, PET scans employ traces that produce small particles called positrons, which then decay to produce higher energy gamma rays. If you want to know more about PET and SPECT scans, please watch my video PET vs SPECT, where I explain each technique in detail and highlight the similarities and differences. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more of my videos where I explain various medical topics in an easy and understandable way, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to get notified every time I upload a video.